my name is sridhar murthy i joined isro on 1st may 1975 after passing out from indian institute of management ahmedabad i joined the then isro satellite systems project which was responsible for the initial satellite projects of indian space research organization uh, many of you may be wondering you know after getting an mba from a business school why i joined a research organization that to isro which was at that time was relatively less known in the country well i always like to take up challenging type of careers which are unique but away from competition rat race that could have been one of the reasons secondly there were many of the earlier mbas from uh, the indian institutes of management who have joined isro thanks to the vision of dr sarabhai who always believed in bringing together teams from different disciplines to work together so i had opportunity to meet uh, some of these young very spirited people uh, dr kiran karnik sanjeev deshmukh who were at that time working for the satellite instructional television experiment in ahmedabad and i was very fascinated by the type of work they were doing and particularly you know experimenting on applications involving high technology like space technologies there was also another connection dr vikram sarabhai was also the founder of both the indian institute of management as well as indian space research organization in indian institute of management one of our senior professors who was the first director to encouraged us to look at public sectors going to public sectors and working uh, so that we can bring in management related uh, you know revolution so many of us we were attracted towards that ideal also all this combined made me to look at a career with indian space research organization although at that point of time i was bit apprehensive whether it could be a very uh, successful career or not so when i joined in bangalore it was a setting outside bangalore in a industrial setting this satellite project was going on in pinia and i came and reported to professor u r rao who was at that time uh, the project director the environment was very vibrant aryabhata project aryabhata satellite was just it was launched and there was feverish activity in analyzing the data that is being received from the satellite and to study the performance of various systems and so on so the very atmosphere there was very vibrant and it attracted me instantly and the people were working on weekends also there was wonderful uh, you know homely atmosphere so th this was the first experience i had with isro and subsequently very soon after uh, the first satellites success isro started talking about uh, discussing about uh, how satellites could be used for specific applications 
how we can build satellites so that it can be useful for uh, the applications like agriculture, uh, studying weather and so on and so forth. So based on the experience of Aryabhatta, there was immediate plan to build a couple of satellites like Bhaskara 1 and 2, in which, you know, I was involved in uh, some feasibility studies and so on. It was very exciting to do that at that point of time. Then subsequently, many management related aspects I could study. Now, it is also interesting to see, you know, how a single project started by ISRO has transi transitioned into a permanent activity of generating various satellites into a program and multiple programs later on. The seeds, of course, was given by Dr. Sarabhai himself through his vision. He has put the mantra of self-reliance. He has also initially encouraged scientific activities. Scientific activities are the one which can universally connect people across different countries because science, science uh, by spirit and nature is universal. So it was easy to cooperate with other countries and to start activities. This can bring greater confidence in people. Self-reliance, international cooperation, and also looking at applications which are relevant to the country. All these seeds that are there in the organization has translated into a culture of looking at how the initial scientific satellite project could be converted into a tangible applications program. So uh, there were many management challenges. How to transform the structure of the organization, which are more organic for a, one single project into a center, which require uh, some kind of permanence, some kind of better structure to encourage multiple projects at the same time. So we, we had to think of infrastructure building, which can be commonly used across various projects. And also, a, you know, a system in which a organizational structure in which, uh, you know, when once a project is over, immediately all the people who are involved can be redeployed meaningfully into activities. So we had to think of activities like technology development programs, which can be useful for future satellite projects. We thought of infrastructure building, infrastructure planning activities, and so on and so forth, and developing human resources. It was completely a learning culture which attracted us. There was no hierarchical, rigid separations that were encouraged in the organization. There were frequent review meetings so that people could express freely across different levels. This is something which is very unique in ISRO organization, which had made it possible to undertake very successfully the multidisciplinary activities and to have effective communication systems. So many such uh, unique organizational culture we can see in, even in those early days, which has helped later on to convert the learning experience into experiments, which are of large scale, end-to-end -end projects like, you know, building experimental satellites for communications and testing it out and so on. And then from the experimental satellites going to operational satellites where I, there could be greater accountability, service standards and so on built into the thing so that they can become vehicles for future commercialization, and expansion of industrial activities. So the seeds for a logical growth of activities was possible through the culture that was developed. 
another important thing i would like to say is what made isro tick was a kind of adherence to meritocracy this was very important you know we we were not aware of any other consideration than you know merit either in the recruitment placement promotions and also you know in in terms of providing opportunities these were all based on a merit so the organization there could be built on greater trust greater cooperation and so on uh, th this is very important the second aspect i always enjoyed is the cosmopolitan atmosphere there were people from different states of india almost it is like mini india when we were working there we could see people from different states interacting and we could learn from each other uh, that atmosphere was uh, wonderful so all this took me into actively participating uh, normally uh, the mbas it is said that they don't stay in an organization for more than one or two years but you know it was very different in my case and you know i stayed throughout and in fact this is the case with many other mbs also in our organization who after joining stayed throughout uh, till the completion of the service uh, so this is a unique uh, environment of our organization that we enjoyed and we could take up uh, you know uh, greater responsibilities and roles so i would like to recount some of uh, the areas in which you know i could uh, uh, work and also see the growth the success of the organization in the initial days you know there was very little infrastructure and we had to seek the support of industries so consciously isro has taken measures to develop industries so certain programs were thought of even in the middle of 1970s when the program had its beginnings there was a group formed called technology transfer group for which dr siddhartha was made chairman and there were many engineers who were representing different centers of isro so i was representing from the satellite center in this group and this is the group which initially was given the mandate whatever isro can do it should be unique what industry can do isro should not do isro should use the capabilities of industry so this ethos was very uh, strong and you know we started thinking how professionally we can develop capabilities in industry by transferring the technologies so a professional system of technology transfer was developed initially under the chairmanship of dr siddhartha and subsequently uh, with uh, dr sudarshan so this was a wonderful time where we found that you know in three different ways we can develop industry participation one is isro needs a lot of systems for its own space projects so to make industries in incentivized we devised a scheme of buyback and creating divisions in industries space divisions like in uh, industries like hcl then walchand nagar industries larsen and tubro uh, godrej and all these you know have become are uh, the busy centers who supplied you know the systems hardware and many products for isro's projects the technology where with all wherever necessary was given to industry by isro through the technology transfer system and virtually isro engineers used to go and stay in industry solve the problems and they gave on hand holding support for them another category of uh, items we looked at is there are many uh, products which are required 
when you know the space systems are to be used typically this could be a gr ground system to receive information from a satellite or equipment used in communications and so on these are needed not only by isro but also the users so they are required in larger numbers so the technology which is developed by isro which is incidentally required even when you develop a space hardware to test it out it could be shared with the industry or sometimes you know even developed in participation with the industry this is a strategy which was uh, followed in the space application center and uh, you know they, there could be larger demand for direct receiving systems from satellites and so on this was transferred to industry this was another category the third category is more uh, you know interesting what is very uniquely developed for space whether we could uh, use it for spin off applications uh, like you know the some of the eutectic powders which are chemical powders which are used to control the fire Spe special fires like metal fires or you know oil fires and so on this could be useful although it was specifically developed in the context of space requirement so these spin off products were many and these insulators uh, uh the the sensors and so on which can find larger in the context of larger applications we could uh, you know share with the industry and develop so as many as 200 technologies we could promote but then you know how do we when we looked at the field there was very little a uh, success rate we try to see what is the reason why people are not able to transfer the technology from a technical organization to industry then we found that there were always intermediaries between those people who develop the technology and the recipients this has reduced the efficiency and many times it also made technology transfer a failure so we thought that we should cut short this and you know bring in a direct contact between the development teams and the industry teams and then how how do industry how does industry know you know what is being developed here so we started a system of you know making announcements preparing uh, you know interest exploration notes giving a brief about the technology possible application and so on we took some young people from the management schools there are many management schools and young people are very energetic they can travel they can meet people and so on so they can study about the market needs and get us the feedback so that we could fine tune the product to the needs of the users and then there is a the question of pricing many times when you transfer a technology the capacity of the industry to take it and you know industry is taking risk they may not know you know what exactly is the market that will be there so initially they would like to commit less and subsequently they could when the sales are a uh, good they could uh, share their revenues so uh, we could have a flexible pricing system the principles for pricing were decided and so on and so forth the post transfer servicing the updating of technologies hand holding during the initial testing in industry all this very professionally we got developed and this went a long way in developing very cordial relations with the industry so it helped us to develop many industries which started taking part in the generating many products indigenously which otherwise were not available there were many materials these included even public sector organizations and private organizations uh, this could be special alloys this when we started the second rocket pslv you know the Uh, it needed a special type of steel called marriaging steel you know we went to the one of the uh, uh, you know the uh, innovative process organization like mr mishradatu nigam in hyderabad 
to to develop this special material and you know you know the, the aluminum industry came to our rescue and then a large number of fabrication industry in building very special equipment for coatings vacuum coatings uh, testing systems because you need simulators which simulate the space conditions so uh, such special equipment could be built by industry there were large number of items we could take up even electronic parts and then you know this special type of detectors like charge coupled devices and then in communication you use amplifiers so traveling tube amplifiers which is based on a field effect transistor based systems and so on so all this type of developments could be undertaken by industry with technical interface from isro isro support so this has helped us to withstand and real self reliance uh, we could we could achieve self reliance was not a taboo in isro self reliance was broadly interpreted isro didn't want to reinvent the wheel but if a part or an item is critical uh, isro wanted to have an alternative so that a small item could not hold a big program to ransom so this was the wisdom with which you know the self reliance was you know uh, developed principle was implemented in isro and also always you know we had the alternatives plan b as part of the project planning activities and the review systems involving outside experts brought lot of inputs into the organization a kind of objective look into the system so all this made very robust type of system within isro and and then you know isro was also very pragmatic we started developing satellites we started developing launch vehicles when we did this satellites it was required that larger and larger satellites gave better economies so we needed large larger satellites but launch vehicle technologies were more complicated help was not easily available from outside so it was taking longer time so we we could launch only smaller satellites so here we have a difference so we we had to independently pursue the path of or uh, excelling in satellites building higher efficiency higher weight satellites on one side particularly for communications and also trying to see how we can adapt the satellites we build for the launch vehicles so in remote sensing satellites where you know we completely wanted to go in indigenous approach we made the satellites smaller more compact we took risk to uh, adapt technologies which are more advanced so we could produce smaller systems with better performance with the effect that in the middle of 1995 we became best in the civilian domain for the remote sensing satellites which gave us access to the global market now this industrialization is a wonderful uh, area with lots of you know uh, specific participation from large participation from isro engineers and a development saga which has given very strong uh, footing for the self reliant efforts of the program this is very much indicated in 1992 there was there was technology denial because of the missile technology control regime and we had to fully pursue indigenous route to develop cryogenic engines for our launch vehicles geostationary launch vehicle program so at this point of time we could withstand and also continue with our programs because of this strong base that is built in industrial side so what is the vision for this industry development space 
industries are the instruments for the growth of the program if we look at the world the world was moving towards having greater and greater private participation private companies were making satellites they were owning satellites they were providing services and they were also looking at global markets so a space industry when developed in india has to have a ultimate vision of growing into an entity which can play globally on equal footing this is the ultimate vision with which you know we have to take the industry development so we were wondering how we reach this stage right now all the industries only are serving uh, the indian needs indian space project needs and also there is no industry which is integrating the total system there is no industry which is owning the total space systems so we thought that you know initially we need to look at some policies which will be enablers for industry to 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 come into a stage in which you know they they can move up in the value chain and secondly eventually they should be enabled to play a global global role so what is coming in the way why industries in india are not thinking like america investing into these areas there are several regions one is the access to technologies second is the risk involved you know space requires large investments and also the gestation is very long they have to wait for a long time to get the returns and also space systems per se provide less return so unless there is a huge market for applications which in fact you know is the space system is a upstream system it is the services you know which is a larger market probably if you have a one uh, one rupee investment into a space segment you can generate a business of 15 rupees that is 1 is to 15 is the ratio in which you know the upstream investments and the services can work so indian in industry naturally was attracted more to play a role of you know providing services with the space systems made available through someone who is taking greater risk so the indian government you know tried to provide that facility but this is only the beginning eventually you know industry itself should even get into the investment into the space segment so on policy front isro started looking at space communications policy which where you know the there was a vision of you know providing a route for ownership from the indian satellites and also sharing whatever is the government assets sharing the capacity for the services provided by the private sector this were enabled at least in the beginning the other was also relating to the space imaging related policies there also yeah, the sharing of data that is owned by the satellites of government was enabled so these policies came into picture but at the same time there were other elements which were required which were not ready at that point of time so this even for decades you know this couldn't take off so in the initial stages we have to think of an intermediary system which can allow the indian industries to create heritage so that eventually you know they can uh, see the global market this is the concept in which you know uh, mr sudarshan who was a great champion of this corporate front uh, we created a corporate front in isro which was uh, required to think of 
creating an interface for the industry so that you know they could participate and satisfy the requirement global requirements so we created a company under uh, under isro as a marketing arm so uh, this company did not get into you know large investments it intended to use the facilities of isro wherever you know it is available and also the expertise of isro because it is isro zone company so access is better but at the same time use the capacity in industry also and service the global markets so i moved naturally from looking into the industry interface activities to commercialization activities that is how i got introduced into commercialization so we created this company and this company initially took up the challenge of marketing the images what were the challenges we faced at that time we were not known at all we didn't have any pedigree in marketing globally secondly we didn't have the marketing infrastructure so whatever efforts we made to 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 provide although we were very competitive it was not very easy for us to enter into the market then we started looking at who are the best in the world who have this marketing infrastructure so we had the opportunity to collaborate and create a marketing exclusive marketing tie up with the american company in a space uh, at that time it was called iconas and subsequently it became uh, you know the goi and then uh, space imaging and so on so we created this tie up and started marketing our ground systems the the systems which can receive data remote sensing data from the satellites and also we started providing data to the global users through this marketing tie up so that is how the story of uh, our imaging sales so our satellite could fill the global map almost all continents you know we had uh, facilities to receive the data as many as 22 ground stations came up and the kind of collaborations that were enabled made it possible to make some innovations also very interesting thing you know normally those days the satellite data was being received through very large systems almost 6 to 7 meter dishes you know you need a separate building a lot of investment for somebody who wants to receive the data and you know do business so there were innovations from russians at that time a company there which produced you know small ground stations and also there was innovations of mobile stations you know which which can move from one place to another and receive data depending on the need this was very attractive to 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 defense forces so many such innovative methods of receiving uh, data from satellite could be possible and then you know we could have a worldwide presence we had couple of problems then what has happened this is a big company which is marketing data from american satellites when we started there was none but subsequently you know they had their own satellites and then you know we were we, we were providing data there was no possibility of building our brand our name is not projected it was always even when we are giving through our satellite there was no way in which we could build brand image globally which was necessary if eventually you know we need to have a stable global business so this was one of the problems we faced then how to overcome this the second of course it was an exclusive arrangement and you know the company had its own priorities so the amount of returns were almost 50% of the revenues were to be shared with the company it's a, it was a big company number one company so 
it was negotiating why is it was becoming difficult so we we thought that you know we should independently go and try out and secondly we should build our own brand so there was efforts towards that and we started in that direction there was also a very good uh, type of uh, you know awareness created through the images uh, which benefited us uh, for example in europe we had one company which was uh, you know marketing our data they have extensively used to participate in projects like wall to wall europe wall to wall imaging that was called like that because the entire U europe was homogeneously mapped and our images uh, were used and because of this kind of applications we had tremendous amount of feedback from user point of view when our data was to be used in the global context what is a kind of technical uh, improvements we should make in terms of the ground processing and so on we could get a very good handle on that so the commercial activities apart from putting uh, you know greater accountability on us because of the demands of the users have also resulted in improving our products this is about remote sensing then we are we, we also started about what about other capabilities isro has a very broad range of capabilities it can make uh, satellites it, it uh, already its launch vehicles are pro one it has started launching all remote sensing satellites from our own country and you know it has uh, tremendous other capabilities how can we may ma make use of those capabilities for the commercial putting our capabilities into the global market so we started thinking about it and started exploring that direction the first came the challenge of you know how to uh, market our launch services those days there were only few options for launching small satellite systems but then there was dumping in the market so it was not easy for us to make entry into the market the greatest challenge is since we had till then less number of launch launches as compared to russian vehicles or american vehicles or european vehicles the commercial insurance companies were not coming and offering you know viable solutions to the customers so initially to get entry into the market initial flights we had to give relaunch guarantees like you know the arian also had initially you know such a system so we 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 got into the market and then you know then we thought what will make a difference in in marketing the launch services two things we found uh, there was a wonderful uh, support from the launch vehicle program office of isro and also the uh, the center which produces launch vehicle the vikram sarabhai space center and a center where launches take place that is the shri harikota range with the support of all this we made you know the customer service as the key differentiator one thing keeping to the schedule so if somebody wants comes for launch and if he wants to launch by the end of the year we were ready to offer the launch this is one difference and also we also made price very affordable coming to the risk we gave the launch guarantee so all this there were regular launches so start people started coming then we found that you know we have sufficient capacity to offer multiple launches now with the help of some companies with uh, with isro zone efforts we could develop interfaces for launching multiple satellites this is something and our launch vehicle also could offer launch into different orbits which were not so easy for small satellites which go as piggy backs along with bigger satellites in launch vehicles so all these advantages of offering multiple type of orbits 
multiple satellites at a time for better economy better customer service made a difference and today without a single failure there is also i think uh, fortune favored on our side in terms of the statistical you know it is statistically impossible to have 342 satellites or whatever it is from 34 countries without a single failure all of them so it was a tremendous very soon we came to a situation the commercial insurance companies told that you know we we offer almost same insurance uh, premium a uh, cost to the customers at the same rates as the most reliable vehicles of the world so this was a wonderful thing and of course this continues the third area of you know how we can build the satellites so here we thought that you know unless we have earlier supplied satellites to some customer and built the heritage it was not possible to even enter the competition because the competition conditions required that you should have successfully done the business earlier so to begin with you need a success but you know that is denied because you know you are a starting startup there so uh, we thought that the best way for us is to go with a company where you know we could define a synergy so we could do that with the european astrium company which was a very successful well known company so we had uh, to forge a tie up now we are government company they are a private company how do we bring the successful private public partnership even today it's the biggest challenge in india i was discussing about it this morning uh, even today we don't have a very good model in high tech areas relating to public private partnership probably one of the reasons why we are not able to progress very well in the commercialization but here we could build that we said what are the things which come in the way when uh, public and private companies how to you know come together so uh, one of the important things is the risk if there is a failure who shares the risk we can divide the you know uh, revenues but then you know there is also some penalty in case you know you are not successful and that will be known only after you know you see you supply the satellite although insurance is there and all that there is some amount of penalty which you have to bear and how do you share this risk between the two companies so this is a very ticklish thing it is very difficult to establish when a two teams come together and work from two different cultures you have to prove that you know you see it is a, like a single te- team for a customer it should be a single team so we had to innovate on a organizational system risk sharing we said that irrespective of anything we will share 50 50 risk if there is a failure and we have to bear the penalty of that failure so this clarified many things so that there, there is no one up manship and you know you see all this uh, uh, you know ma- maneuvering is not necessary once you know you have a clarity both of both of us we are sharing equally and that was a wonderful formula which gave us success we could successfully bid win to satellite contracts and supply to the euro so w- 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 customer for one is a huge company service company the uh, U- utilsat the other was a company in uk and this second satellite was innovative at that time and also that company was making satellite our partner was making satellites we were making satellites is there no conflict we have to resolve that issue also because we are also marketing they are also marketing we should not compete with each other so how do we resolve then we we divided 
our strong point is smaller satellites so up to 4.5 kilowatt power satellites we will be providing and beyond that they will be providing so this conflict was also re resolved so it was all this shows if there is a will there is a possible solution in a spirit of give and take so that you know we can build in synergy and any issues if it is pre decided i think the teams can work wonderfully learn from each other take advantage of the strengths of each this is what we demonstrated through this system so uh, the commercialization phase uh, was also very interesting very challenging and we, we have to constantly innovate and keep tuned to the dynamically to the needs of the environment although you know we were working in a government setup we could do many things because of this a constant response to you know opportunities as well as you know the the best support we had from a wonderful organization like uh, isro as i was mentioning so it was very exciting for me to work with this organization and to complete my full term with the, this organization this these are some of the things i wanted to share uh, of course there are it's a long journey not always you know you know we, we, we were meeting success but with each a uh, setback also we were learning that was the culture of the organization and each time uh, some setback is there people always our leaders at least you know we experienced that they encouraged us to look at you know what we learned out of that how not to repeat the mistakes how to correct uh, the situation you know the the this was a kind of sentiment rather than you know going with hunting and so on this also developed uh, some ki kind of a free enterprise within the organization so that so many things could be achieved so many missions successful missions so many instruments were i think there are as many as 100 instruments which were developed within the country and industry could develop many new systems all this was possible because of the culture culture and the leadership we enjoyed in this organization now when we have this initial successes of course you know we had a lot of attention because this was a new activity initially you know the media gave lot of publicity publicity each successful launch we were on the front page there came a situation one of our insat launches went to the, to the second page so immediately a uh, chairman isro called us called us and said that why we are losing the attention of the public is it because we have become less relevant are we not uh, thinking of new things and exploring the new frontiers what is the reason then we decided we will have every week a kind of evening session with some of the intellectuals in the city so we could take a meal and then have a in one of those a uh, we were meeting one of the scientists who, who was leading a inst scientific inst research institution here and he mentioned there are many things which are less known about moon its own origin okay as as the evidence is available and i uh, the completely it is a dry bone planet no water there and so on and so forth he told about some of the unresolved questions about the moon even before that it caught our attention and the chairman immediately he assembled a team there was a team to look at the mission possibilities and even couple of years earlier there was a publication from one of our engineers who 
explore different ways of reaching moon and what is the least one which demands least of energy and so on the other beaten path traditionally which is being used by others and so on these three options were looked at and they studied with the launch vehicle capability we have we could find that you know we could have a mission to the moon at least technically now how do we bring in instruments required for study of various aspects of the moon what is that we are going to study so we thought that whatever instruments we develop we should also give some opportunity for international cooperation international cooperation is a wonderful thing uh, you know which isro can develop further and in this context you know we should provide through this mission opportunities for international payloads so uh, it was possible to make announcements of opportunities and we and choose among them we had very prominent institutions from us bulgaria europe european space agency japan and so on we had wonderful proposals and we could have almost half of the instruments from different agencies in this one single mission which was a smaller satellite which could be launched through the indian vehicle and it became a kind of thing but then you know there could always be criticism you know you see you have so many needs in the country why are you spending money on a esoteric mission like moon mission why should you go there what is the use of science anyway many many countries are studying about it so to address this question a lot of preparatory activities were undertaken the academics who are there the industry people there were consultations through associations like you know the academies in the country and so on so there was a kind of a single voice and also there was a political support so in, in fact this mission was announced by prime minister for first first time during the independence day speech and that put a very strong justification with the backdrop of preparatory activities which were you know pushed by our chairman because you know he, he felt that there should be a consensus when we undertake a missions of this kind people may interpret that we are moving away from the initial vision of isro to 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 sharply focused on you know the developmental applications but science also has got its spin offs its relevance meaning for younger people uh, so working in this frontier areas is something which we cannot ignore also so that is what we you know we could achieve through the mission like uh, chandrayaan mission so i had lot of opportunity in working in the international cooperation sphere for a short time of 3 years and odd i was the scientific secretary of isro directly uh, under the staff of uh, chairman isro and also coordinating with all the program officers and centers of isro looking after activities relating to the outreach from space international cooperation human resources development uh, the budget and resources all these different offices uh, coordinating with them and then you know guiding and so on this role was also very interesting as part of this role i was able to do lot of international co participate in international cooperation activities and also i had an opportunity to go to europe be a part of our embassy in paris to liaise with the the uh, space organizations and space industry in europe and particularly it was a time when we have to build relations in the most healthy way and also participate in the united nations related uh, you know activities uh, in the copus and other that is committee on peaceful uses of outer space and so on so i had wonderful opportunity to meet various people and i could see that lot of respect is commanded for the capabilities of 
engineers in India, in ISRO and so on, because they were exposed to many of the engineers going and, you know, um, working, training in the European establishments and cooperating for the tracking network cooperation. And also we had wonderful opportunity to build joint missions. When I was there, we debated a lot to build a strong a synergetic mission uh, between France and India because things were coming down. So the coordinator from the French National Space Agency and I was uh, debating a lot to think of something. And during one of our chairman's visit, we could come up with an idea to have a joint mission. Subsequently, this became the famous, uh, you know, megatropics mission, the mission to study the water cycle, which is so important. Little is known about the complete water cycle uh, of Earth. So this was a wonderful opportunity that I had in, uh, to work in various international cooperation activities also, and to build up areas. Here the challenge was mainly, you know, our interests aligned with many space powers because space has a global outlook, global perspectives and so on. So uh, we had alignment with the concerns of uh, the major space powers and spacefaring countries on one side. We were also a developing country. So we had the empathy for the use of uh, space, space applications and so on. So we had to balance both of this. And this was possible through the international cooperative activities. So it was a wonderful journey. Anyway, I had a lot of learning through this career. And subsequently, I thought that I should spend uh, or use this experience in sharing this excitement, knowledge, and everything that I gained, spirit that I gained with young people in the university. That is where I am engaged into right now. Thank you.